Hi, my name is Alan Richardson and welcome to this case study on how we can test Java apps. Now this is slightly different from normal case studies because we're not going to do a lot of unit testing but we are going to show some unit testing in action and we're going to look at it from a test perspective, how testers can take Java applications and test them in different ways. A little bit about me, I have Java for Testers, which is a book teaching people how to code in Java. I have a blog called Evil Tester, which focuses on technical testing. I have a blog called Selenium Simplified, which teaches people how to use Selenium WebDriver with Java. And there's some online training courses there as well. And I have a main consultancy website called compendiumdev.co.uk, where you'll find links to all these websites, links to all my books, and links to all my online training courses, blog articles, conferences, everything else. So this is a case study looking at how we can test a Java app. So what started this off? All right now the guys at House of Test who are a consultancy in Sweden wrote a little app, a little test data generator and they released it as a contest. Let's have a quick look at their website here. So there we go. this is their website, this is their um, contest basically saying we've got a little tool, here you go, download this jar file, have a look at it test it and then people went and tested it posted their com comments I had a quick look as well because I thought this would be a fun thing to do and I posted my lessons learned up on the evil tester blog this set of videos is going to explore the information here and show it in practical terms and elaborate a little bit on this and I'm also going to have a quick look at a small application I wrote called Evil Tester Scratchpad, which hasn't been released yet. It does a similar thing, but I'm just using this to show how we can test pretty much any Java application because they're slightly different. So the first thing we want to do then is do what it says, go off to their website, click on the link, download the jar file, which I have done. Here it is. Now you need, in order to run a Java app, you need to have the Java runtime environment installed. In order to do some of the extra things we're going to have, you need the Java SDK installed. Right? They're different things. We're going to be doing some development work in Java here. And I'm also going to be using an IDE. But let's start with, if we were just testing this, we're just coming in clean, we've just downloaded a jar file, how do we test this? Right, so the first thing I'm just going to do is I'm just going to double click on this. There we go. I've started the app. We're running it. Now I've got a GUI I can test. And we can also see in the background here it's created a data generation log.txt. Presumably that's for this print logs to file. We don't know yet. We've just started. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at here. Now if we're testing this, we can see we can hover over things and there's... Oh look, that's good. I didn't notice that the first time I tested this. So this is showing us what the capital chars is in the tooltips. Uh, unfortunately, we can see that there's spelling errors in there. If I look in the small chars there, I can see that the letter O is repeated twice. So I can go hovering around here and double check for... So nothing shows when we're doing international chars. That's probably a bug. Special chars is showing the tooltips that it uses there. Password friendly chars is showing me the chars. Um, I can change the length of string. I can click the about. Uh, so, I mean, I, I can do a whole bunch of things here. Just initially looking for spelling errors. I can try this out. Let's generate a random string. There we go. There's a bunch of characters from the capital letters, small chars, numbers. Let's just make it all numbers. And it's giving me a random string with numbers. Now, you, you start asking questions like, is this random enough? I don't know. Is it actually using all these numbers? I could probably check. I could manually check through this. So we start asking questions about, is this good enough? One of the things I like doing is trying to use the application features to help me test it. If I'm testing a website and I'm working on a browser, I'm going to use the browser features to help me test. If I'm working in a, a, any other application and it's got logging, I'm going to switch the logging on. If there's any way to look at what's going on, I'm going to try and do it because I have a model of testing where I try and understand the application and I try and observe the application as well as I can. So let's observe this application as well as we can. So I'm going to print logs to a file. Let's see what happens. If I generate random string now, let me have a quick look at this data generation log. I can see that it's starting to add information into this log file. So if I do small chars only, generate random string, 
this isn't the best text editor use for these things. But there we go, it's added in the return string. In fact, this is a terrible text editor to use. Sometimes the tools we have get in the way of what's going on. So I'm going to edit this with Notepad++ this time. And at the very least, we now have new lines being shown. So let me generate the capital letters. Come back to the Notepad. Now, if I say Notepad text text hasn't brought in the, the changes yet, so I'm going to have to go back down here. So normally what I do is try and find a way of tailing it, find a way of making sure this uh, changes nice and easily. So what I'm going to do here, let's open this in Sublime. I think with Sublime, if I do special chars here, generate random string, come back here. So Sublime at the very least is going to refresh. So depending on what platform you're on, but I'm not convinced Windows has a tail command, does it? Let's have a look. All right, so Windows doesn't have a, an obvious tail command that I know of. First time I tested this, it was on the Mac, so I just tailed the logs, tail minus F, data generation log.txt. I'm working on Windows, I haven't got an obvious um, tailing application at hand, so I'm using Sublime. I could go and download a tailing application, but regardless, what I'm trying to do is observe the behavior of the application. I'm not making a lot of notes as I'm testing this, but I'm making notes in here. Now, it'd be nice if this logged how many characters I'm trying to do, what the actual command is, but it's fairly good at showing me the results. Now, we can tell that if I start putting in 200,000, it's going to start writing a lot of information in the log that could be an issue there, etc., etc. Now we can see that it's also automatically copying string to the clipboard. Let me just look. Yep, it's copied strings in the clipboard. Looks pretty much the same thing. I could use a diff to check whether the, the full string was, was copied in. Let's just do a, a quick hack check. There we go, that lines up nice and easily. At a very crude level, it looks like it's copied in the clipboard properly. Now because we're seeing that the values are in the tooltips, International chars has none, so let's select 200 international chars, generate random string. Nothing has appeared in the log, nothing at all. We've still got the old string in the clipboard. So clearly that's not working, there's some sort of bug there. If we're just going on a bug hunt, we can scroll, scroll around this, we can see that there's uh, spelling errors and tooltips and various other things. So we could find errors in there. What I really want to do, however, is go a little bit deeper. We found a way of observing it. We could start modeling this application. What I really want to do is find ways of manipulating it in more detail and interrogating this in more detail. 